Hello everyone, I'm Michael Vance, and today I'm going to show you some very simple espresso you can use to automate both the construction and animation of Golden Angle Base Fibonacci Flower Growth as seen in my previous tutorial, Golden Ratio Flower Modeling Tutorial for Cinema 4D. I will quickly review the basics of that method and then show how espresso can make building these shapes much faster. And I will finish with tips on how to animate growth with precision to create animations such as this one. So to briefly review the process used to make our Fibonacci flower as shown in the previous tutorial, we'll start by creating a new document. Name it whatever you like. I'm going to call mine Fibonacci Espresso MV1. Hit save. Go to the MoGraph menu and from there add a MoGraph cloner object and rename it Flower Cloner. Next, add a sphere object and make that sphere a child of the cloner object. Making sure we're in model mode and not object mode, we will scale down the sphere a bit so that the clones don't overlap. And then let's rename the sphere object to Petal Sphere. Next, we're going to select the cloner object again and change its cloner mode from linear to radial, like so. Also, we must change the plane setting from XY to XZ to get the clones facing upwards. Next, we'll change the cloner count to 100 and increase the radius so that they don't crash into one another, like so. Next, we'll add a step effector from the MoGraph menu and make sure that the step effector is in the cloner effectors list. It should be automatically added if the cloner is selected while creating it but if it isn't, you can drag it in manually. Next, select the step effector we just created and deactivate scale in the parameters tab. Activate position instead and change the position Z setting to minus 1000. And let's also rename this effector to position step to distinguish it from the scale step effector we will add later. Now, back in the cloner settings, Multiply the cloner count value, in this case 100, by the golden angle value of 137.5 in the end angle setting. This gives us our basic Fibonacci flower pattern by offsetting every clone by exactly 137.5 degrees. But what if, for example, one wants to experiment with various different cloner counts or even animate the cloner count over time? If I change the count value to 300, for example, I have to remultiply 300 by 137.5. This could become tedious, so instead of constantly recalculating the end angle setting manually or trying to animate it, the very most simple solution is to just use Espresso to do all this more or less automatically. So here is how that is done. Create an Espresso tab from the Cinema 4D Tags menu like so and position the Espresso window somewhere out of the way, like so. Next, drag the Flower Cloner object into the Espresso window, and from the Output Ports menu, select Count from within Object Properties, like so. If we then connect that with the Result node, we can see that the port is correctly outputting the value we entered earlier in the Cloner Counts setting, in this case 300. Next, Drag the Flower Cloner object once more into the Espresso window to create a second Flower Cloner node, like so. And this time we're going to create an end angle port from Object Properties, like so. Now, the objective is to always have the end angle be equal to the cloner count times 137.5 degrees. To achieve this, we will need to create a math node from the Calculate menu and change its functions from Add to Multiply. Remember, our goal is to multiply the count value times 137.5 degrees, so all we should need to do is plug in the count value from the flower cloner into the top input port of the math multiply node, set the bottom port value to 137.5 degrees, and plug the result from that into the end angle port of the second flower cloner node. Unfortunately, it's not quite that easy. While the pattern, by coincidence, looks more or less correct, it's not, and you will run into issues if you don't fix it. So bear with me for a moment and let's plug our math multiply node 
into result node to check the math. As you can see, we get the expected result for 300 times 137.5 of 41,250. But if we check the flower cloner's end angle setting in the attribute manager, we will see that we get a much different result there. This is because Expresso internally uses an angle measurement called radians instead of degrees. Instead of 360 degrees in a circle, there are only 6.28 radians in a circle. So this leaves us with two options. One, we can add a degree conversion node from the Calculate menu like so, set the node's function setting to degrees to radians, and place this node in between the Math Multiply node and the Flower Cloner node like so. Now, if you check the end angle setting of the Flower Cloner once more, you will see that we get the correct result of 41,250 degrees. The second method is to skip the degree node by simply using the native radian value that is equivalent to 137.5 degrees. That value is 2.4, and while it is a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial to fully explain radians, we can check the math by creating a constant node from the general menu, give it a value of 137.5, plug it into the degree node set to degrees to radians, and then check the result with a result node like so. As you can see, the resultant radians is 2.4. So, instead of adding extra nodes to convert degrees to radians, we can simply set the value of the multiply node's second input to 2.4 instead of 137.5, and plug the math multiply node directly into the flower cloner, skipping the degree node. Now, if you select again the flower cloner object and check again its end angle setting in the attributes manager, you can see that we get the correct value of approximately 41,250 degrees without having to use the degree conversion node in Expresso. The reason it isn't exactly 41,250 degrees is because 2.4 radians is actually closer to the golden angle than is 137.5, because 137.5 is an abbreviated value, the more precise golden value of 137.50776. So, using 2.4 is slightly more accurate than 137.5 and requires fewer nodes, so is a win-win all around. So now, using just three nodes, we can change or animate the cloner count value to anything we like, and our Fibonacci flower shape will be preserved no matter what the count, like so. In order to get the animation I showed earlier, we need to animate the growth outward from the center instead of inward from the circumference as we have here. To do that, change the cloner radius from 1000 to 0, and also the step effector's position z value from minus 1000 to just 1000. And adjust the effector's spline curves like so, if needed. Now, there still remains one problem. The flower size remains unchanged regardless of clone count. That's because the step effector will displace the clones the full range of its parameter settings regardless of the number of clones. To rectify this, we will add a position step effector to our existing Expresso setup, like so. And under input ports, we will navigate to parameter transform P, PZ. Now, simply plug the flower cloner count port into the step effector's PZ port, adjust the size of the sphere if needed, and we have a working setup. You may need to tweak the step effector's spline once more for good measure. Finally, to give us control over the diameter of the flower, we'll create a range mapper node from the Calculate menu, connect the flower corner count port to the range mapper input port, and connect its output port to the position step effectors PZ port. And we can then control the overall size of our flower by adjusting the range mapper's output upper port here, like so. Currently, all of our clones are the same size, so to remedy that, we will reselect our flower cloner object, add one more step effector from the MoGraph effectors menu, this time keeping the scale parameter and adjusting the scale value until the outside clones are bigger than the inside clones.
and readjust the position step effector's spline curve to distribute the clones better. Now let's rename the step effector to scale step. Lastly, we will drag this new scale step effector into our Expresso setup, create a scale input port by navigating parameter transform and choose the second scale option, like so. And as before, create a range mapper node between the flower corner count and the scale input. In this case, I will input 0 0.002 in the output upper value of the range mapper node, but you really only need to experiment with values until you find what works best. Finally, to finish the animation, we will set the flower cloner count to zero on frame one and key that, and set the count to 1200 on frame 90 and key that. In the animation I showed at the top, I had the clones overlapping a bit, so we can pr produce that here by simply increasing the size of the petal sphere object. And there we have it, a pretty compelling animation requiring only a handful of objects and another handful of Expresso nodes and just two keyframes. And there you go.